Hey, Cubicle Crashers, Lydia Lee here from Screw the Cubicle. Today, we have a special guest, Sophia Drakawi, who you see here on screen. Uh, I'm in Singapore at the moment. I just actually just landed from the plane. <laughs> a little bit tired. I was up since four in the morning just to catch a plane here. But uh, I wanted to get on uh, live with Sophia today because we have a difference in time zone. Sophia, where are you from right now? Or where are you calling in from? Good morning. I am calling in from Belgium. Right. Okay. So really on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys, the, old, the reason that I have Sophia here is for two reasons. So the, the first one is that I wanted, her, I, I wanted to bring her on board uh, to talk a little bit about her story of uh, her corporate escape because it's so fresh. It's something that literally just happened like January of 2018, right? Like not even a month ago. Uh, and I thought, yeah. you know, we forget what happens to uh, what happened to us when we have this escape. And, and because it sort of just happened to you, Sophia, I thought it was really a great uh, recap, not only for yourself, but for obviously the community members at Screw the Cubicle to learn more mm -hmm. about what your journey has been like um, and get your insights on, you know, what you've learned in the last year that you've sort of been trekking on this journey while you've been working with me and the community as well. Um, the second thing of why Sophia is also here, she's part of a uh, three person plus me chat show that is happening tomorrow, <laughs> uh, which is the corporate escapees tell their stories. So uh, Sophia is one of the um, guests tomorrow. You'll see Danny, uh, Danny Lim from Singapore, Pam Donison from the States and obviously Sophia Darkawi, which will be with us. And all of us have been actually uh, tribe members as part of the Screw the Cubicle community for almost a year now. So uh, there'll be some great banter tomorrow. There'll be even more in-depth uh, conversation around financial planning, um, talking to, you, to your families and spouses about your transition. Uh, and we're going to be jamming about that today. So if you're watching this today, there will be a link either above or below this video, depending on which platform you're watching us in, uh, that will lead you to the Crowdcast link to register for tomorrow's chat show. Now, in that chat show, you're also going to get access to four of the, the, the sessions in our uh, Reinvent Your Life and Career 101 uh, learning series. So two of them already have, have passed. The first one uh, was with me, is how to create a side hustle you can love, which is uh, a replay available for that and a free workbook. So make sure you check that out when you register. And then the second one we had last week with Diane Hopkins. Sophia, you know Diane as well from our tribe. Uh, she taught us how to profit from our give, gifts by teaching what we know in things like courses, retreats, and group programs. Programs, which is awesome uh, and we were so lucky to have Diane with us last week and then this week of course tomorrow uh, you'll have Sophia, Danny, myself and Pam uh, jamming on a live chat show about everything to do with career transitions and planning uh, for how you're going to start your side hustle while working a full-time full job and all the mental preparation as you know Sophia like we, we always talk about practical strategies of business planning but like I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you two just like me have learned everything's actually around the mindset isn't it an approach yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Less of, less of the strategy, actually more of what's up here. So that's sort of what I would love to chat with you quickly today to warm people up to tomorrow's uh, chat show and also share a bit of your story before they join as well. So, um, Sophia, I'll let you do a quick little intro. Um, tell people when did you quit, why you quit, and what, was the, uh, what you're most excited about in 2018 because of this sort of new beginning for you. So I handed in my notice on the 13th of December, 2017. Mm -hmm. That is also my parents' anniversary. Uh, and then the next day, my fiance now proposed. Yeah. So it was a very interesting week, very emotional week. And my last day at my, my previous employer was on the 12th of January. And it, it, was, it was pretty wild because it was a kickoff event where they were talking about this is where we're going to for the next two years. And I'm sitting there. Oh, yeah, great. Cool. I mean, guys, this is my leaving party. It was very fun. And, well, the reason I quit happened the year before. So I believe you and I started working together around November 2016, mm -hmm. where I was really at a point in my career where I said, well, is this it? Is there nowhere that I can just progress? And do I really need to play all those political games? And that was just not my beef. Um, and so thanks to our work together, I came to realize that what frustrates me is where my strengths lie and what I should talk about. Mm. So that is how um, the 
Lead Through Happiness program that was cre- was created um, as a as an online coaching business. So that really got me going, and it helped my mindset to just keep on pushing through and stay in my job, um, and also realize that you can't just quit overnight. You yeah. need to have. A plan, and that was sort of. Um, I think the discussion you had with me, you're like, do I just need to throw in the towel like right now? Which sounds really scary for most people. I think most of us aren't the, you know, jump off a cliff and hope the parachute opens sort of people. We need calculated risk, and I think that was one yes. of the, one of the conditions you had for me, where you're just like, I need yeah. to feel safe. I need to plan this out properly, even though uh, I, I mean, I remember what was it six months? You said six months, right? I'm going to quit. And then I said, well, it really depends on how much time you're going to put in. But at the end of the day, we have to be practical, right, about those sorts of goals, but also doing it in a way that doesn't pressure you financially, you know, where you're not quitting before you're ready to quit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. And it's true, the the part of the calculated risk that helped me, it also Mm. helped me talk to my to my to my family, to so my fiance um, and just keep it on a low as well, which was a bit odd because at work I'm, I'm a kind of an open book is more like what you see is what you get. Uh, and there I was working for my employer and at the same time saying, well, if I could do it my way, this is how it would look like. Mm. So that side hustling was it, um, it. If I see it over a year, at the beginning, it was like super exciting. And then there was a part where I had a bit of a dip in terms of I got so frustrated because I so wanted to get out and I'm not happy. But um, what helped me was with you and also with the community, helping each other to stay motivated and say, you know what? It's only a matter of time. You know, you're going to leave. You know, you have your deadline. Mm. And also with you being very upfront, like, OK, I know you want to leave in six months, but get real. It's mm. not going to happen. So um, and it's true. It really took a year before I actually left. And a year at that point when you said, well, you're going to stay with them for another year seemed so long. Mm. And looking back now, it just flew by like this. Yeah. It's just, it it just goes by quicker than, than you think. Mm. So, And also I think you, it was sort of a little bit less painful to go back to work from like when we talked in 2016 and go, oh, it's not six months. It might be a year now. Um, Because now you've actually like prepared financially for it. You've had like little milestones that you've reached to validate your confidence about your business. Right. We talked a lot about beta testing and things like that while you're working full time. Um, Now what's happened for you since? So for example, you did quit in January of this year in 2018, how did you quit? So did you go straight in for people that don't know your story? um, What were sort of the combinations of things that had to happen for you to feel financially secure to quit? So um, one thing that happened was a great surprise. It's a, one of my contacts um, that I'd previously worked on, on, on projects uh, a few years ago, then asked me, you know what? We need we need a, a trainer. Would you be interested in taking over a project? Mm. And I said, sure. What's the project about? What do you want me to train on? So she also asked me, well, what is it that you like about facilitating workshops? I'm like, you know what? I'm not really the type of person that can talk and talk and talk for an hour and then everybody else does the exercise for five minutes. Mm. I need that. I need pe- I need to see people involved. I can talk for 20 minutes and then they do the work for a lot for a lot longer. So she said, "Okay, cool because this is the pro- project we have. So how do you feel about it? And you know, we're short of staff in trainers that speak French and Spanish." Mm. And I said, "Great. Okay, cool. I'm your person." So the fact that I knew that I could be part of a trainers community um, help me to say, okay, if the project, if I can start the work, then, then I can quit. Mm. And then I also started thinking about financially, what does that mean to me? It also came at a point where, well, my tenancy agreement for my flat mm. came up in London, just the day af- in London, mm-hmm. just the day after I quit, um, with my previous employer. So everything came at the same time. Mm. And I was just happy. I'm like, cool. I mean, I can quit then. I can give up my flat then. 
and then just be between Brussels and, and London, Sicily, where my fiance lives in London. So the dream of being a digital nomad or more of a nomad was uh, <laughs> was coming true again. Yeah. Like my mom always says, you live with your suitcases. I'm like, yes, and I love my suitcases. <laughs> yeah, very different from a flat in London sort of lifestyle, which is not, which is not uh, you know uh, uh, that affordable these days, right? To own an apartment no. in London, and that was something that even we discussed during the community. Is this something you should do? Give up your apartment. Put things to put things into storage. Move back in with your family for a short amount of time, you know, which no yeah. gr grown ass woman wants to do, but it's temporary, and we have to sort of talk that out, exactly. isn't it? Of how how we had to transition from there. Um, now we're gonna obviously. I don't want to. I don't want to overly ask about that story because we're gonna reveal a lot around your financial preparation and the relationships yeah. you had to sort of nurture as you did the transition. But um, in tomorrow's talk, talk show, uh, so again, you know, the link is above or below this video to register to watch the Fiat tomorrow as well in the chat show. Um, but I wanted to quickly talk about the freelancing idea. Now, I know that a lot of people um, have a you know, particular idea of how they think they want to quit, right? They, they want to have this full-blown yeah. full business. They want to have something that replaces their income completely to feel sort of mm. safe enough to quit. Um, and that obviously isn't a thing that is completely perfect for you. So you're not having these full-time hours, for example, but you sort of did some micro changes in your life to be able to go with this decision. So for example, not living in London may, really means that you don't have to spend that kind of money anymore, yeah. right? which also yeah. could afford you to actually not work full time, which is sort of interesting, yeah. isn't it? Because it's like w once you physically remove yourself from an expensive city, all of a sudden yeah. the options are a little bit more different. Um, has yeah. that sort of like, you know, like, like th those decisions that you have made, you know, to move out of London, take on this consulting role while, you know, working and building your business. Was this sort of something that you had to think about sort of more deeply, like, like, did it feel scary not to have a full-time gig and going into more of a part-time role? Or is that was a blessing in disguise? Like, how was that process of thought for you? It was a bit of both. Um, because when I realized how many um, days I could work on one project, I was like, okay, th there were moments where I was like, oh yeah, um, this, the first thing I thought of is this is great. This would be my first step into freedom land again. Right. Um, and then after a few weeks, the, the closer you get to, okay, I'm, I'm going to quit now. I'm going to quit. It's like, oh, shit, and what if, what if, so all those insecurities come up. Mm. But then I had to be realistic. I'm like, look, you set up your business to be a, an online coaching business, but just open open your horizons a little bit. Now you've accepted to, to do the, this freelance gig for another consultancy company. Why don't you reach out to more agencies yeah. that, you, that you know and that you have worked with? Um, I love that. So... Yeah. So, so that's, that's what kept me going and said, okay, you know what? And when you talk to, to, to those training agencies, why don't you try to go on different projects there? Mm. And that's what really appeased my mind. So I had to put myself out of my own shoes and look at it from, from a business perspective, like realistically, yeah. what do you know about agencies? What do you know how they mm. work? And it'll, it actually gives me time to also focus on my online coaching business. Mm. Cause that is the brand new yeah. one for you, right? So to yeah. expect the coaching business to replace your income quickly when you've never, you know, haven't done it for such a long time is a lot of pressure. And I love the it fact is. that you intelligently sort of utilize the, the, the learning and development skills that you have right now, right? Which, which, um, yeah. which was so much easier to utilize cause that's the job you've been paid to do. All you're doing yeah. is just doing it on a consultancy level so that you can have a bit more freedom in your life. So it's sort of like a, yeah. almost like a transition like space, right? Where yeah. you're protected by an income that you enjoy uh, without the huge pressure of like, I have to learn everything about, you know, launching my own personal brand ASAP in order to make that kind of money that, that I need. Um, and I yeah. think that's a great message for people listening is that sometimes these opportunities are already around you. It's yeah. sometimes not yeah, even yeah. the business that you want to start. It's something else, you know, is, is and rather than or. You know, and so yeah. freelancing and consultancy, I think, is such a great uh, combination to add into your body of work, right? When you are yeah. when you are sort of uh, thinking of leaving your job, because it adds more extra value of a financial gain. I think when you can freelance and things like that, and not to disregard 
old colleagues. Like, that's why I don't burn any bridges, right? Like when you leave jobs. Yeah. Um, and actually be, and that's what I did too. And I love that story because the same thing happened to me the first six months of my uh, quitting year, I had six months of um, a consultancy gig with the company I had to quit from. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They needed me. So it's like, if I didn't think about negotiating a project or negotiating a consultancy role, I would have sort of gone into full-time business which uh, with a lot more pressure. And I think it's, it's, yeah. it's a great message for people listening that p- potentially you could have some low-hanging fruit opportunities uh, that can yeah, allow you true. to monetize actually and profit as a location independent person today, rather than wait till your business becomes sort of a much bigger entity, which is a really realistic, right? And practical way to, to do that. Um, yeah. Great, thank you, Sophia, for that. And, and again, you're gonna hear more about Sophia's story tomorrow. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about is because as everybody knows from the last you know few weeks of, of, of seeing uh, the Academy of Cubicle Crashers come into play, we are starting our next intake uh, February 19th. Sophia's in our Academy as yeah. well, and she signed up. And, and so, I, I mean, you've been a part of our community in other ways, not in the Academy, but in other group programs we've ran, which are very yeah. similar to the Academy. A lot of people from our alumni uh, at, at the community will be also part of the Academy. Now, you know, instead of hearing me talk about how great it is, because obviously I created the program and I designed the program, <laughs> and I'm going to say it's fucking kick-ass. Uh, but, you know, it's always really great to, to, to find out from someone who has been a student, right? Someone who has been part of a community in the last 12 months uh, because this community is really um, built from the feedback of the people like you, right? We interview yeah. people like you that sort of went, what happened to your story that allowed you to be successful? Uh, what did you need as part of support systems and mentorship and um, leadership skills, right? That allows you to feel confident about being a first time business owner uh, when you've never done it before, you know? Uh, was it a combination of, of business learnings as well as the human part, you know, of the emotional uh, struggle that we go through when we go through change? Like how much of that combination is necessary? So um, what I would love for you to share is that in the 12, last 12 months of being a part of the um, Screw the Cubicle community, what, what do you think um, specifically um, helped you sort of move forward to transition successfully to get you from the first day we ever met, right? Which is like, I don't even know what the hell I'm going to do with a business, right? And, and yeah. quit my job <laughs> to now actually quitting, you know, and, and, and jet setting, you know, to all these different parts of the world and, and doing your thing as a location independent consultant. Like what, what has been the most powerful um, support or guidance you may have received from, you know, being a part of the, the community? So to me, being part of the community was very important to not give up and Mm. to to be among people that are in the same situation. We all had different skill sets, but they all merged together. Mm. And the fact that we could help each other and you could just go on the Facebook page and say, oh, my God, I need this. And I'm a tech disaster. And I went from a tech disaster to a techie beginner. Right. <laughs> so I left a bit of, a, of the disaster behind because there were people in the group that were so great to help me forward with mm. that. But then when I wasn't sure about, oh my God, I need to do this first online training, my, my first webinar, how do I go on about it? And the fact that you can bounce off ideas mm. gives you more confidence and makes you realize that, hey, let's not forget I've got a certificate in learning and development. I've been doing, I've been working in learning and development for a few years now. I know what I can do. It's just, I'm afraid to do it. And the fact that you have a group that you say, okay, that day I'm going to do my webinar. That day I'm going to quit is you promised it to your fellow colleagues and you do not want to lose face. You just want to come back the next week and say, I did it. It's, yeah. fine. it's an accountability, right? To pe- someone yeah. beyond yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and, it, and it is so great because um, we really, we held each other accountable, but we also motivated each other by texting each other privately, by, by posting uh, stuff on the group. And having that group of people that have the same mindset really helps. And it was great because you could cry and you could jump for joy. And that is what the, you know, that's where you realize that we're so lucky to live in, in an era where, you know, Skype, FaceTime, anything is just right there. And you, 
you're far away in distance, but you're so close to each other. Mm. And you really create this new family. Mm. And the fact that you belong and you're not that odd person as you think you are in, in an office sometimes, right. it, it just helps you. It, it helps you to breathe throughout your nine to five as well. So mm. that, that is really what the community helped me with. That is, you know what? Um, it's a 90 day program and you know that this is your goal. So you're going to work towards your goal, even on a, on a faster pace. Yeah. And that, and that's it. When you came into the, um, 90 day mastermind of last year's, that was yeah. only just 90 days. And this yeah. Academy is 12 months, right? The longer awesome. version. And I think, and, and, and even in your story, it's like, it did take, I mean, from what we have discovered and our most successful statistic of corporate yeah. escapees, you know, that actually did the work and got out. It does take about an average of nine to 12 months for people as, because mm. you're working full time. So you're not focusing yes. on building a side hustle full time, um, which takes a bit of time. And there's always this realistic, like I'm no one that lies about the fact that it does take a bit of patience and time to do this because it's a new learning yeah. curve for everybody. And that's sort of what we do at the Academy, right? We walk you through things step by step, not only just about the business side of things, but uh, also about the human side of things. Right. So yeah. What did you get out of the community when it comes to like, like not just business stuff, but like, was there anything that it helped you when it comes to your personal life or making decisions about certain things and in, in the goals that you have for your life? Like, did, or, or was it the business stuff that sort of most valuable for you uh, as, as, as when you were a part of the community? Um, it most certainly was the personal side mm. because I think it's you as a person that you, you have to build yourself in order to, to, to build your business as well. It, they, they, go, uh, um, they go together. But if your mindset isn't right, then you can just be sitting in front of your laptop and going, okay, you know what, I'll just write a text. And um, the fact that you have to realize that you really have to be patient, you're going to start understanding what the per word patience means mm. and put that to practice. Uh, it is a pain in the ass. I thought that at some point in my life I was patient and I realized that I wasn't at all. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, patience is a bitch, but it's, it, she's your best friend as well. Mm. And, and, and it's the one that, that you have to keep and you have to pull through. And, and, and it is that mantra you have to create for yourself. Mm. Like, just don't give up. You can do this. Keep on pushing through. And it's, it's, you're almost there. It's really taking a step back and reflecting and saying, look at where you were 10 months ago or a year ago or six months ago and look at where you are right now. You just need to do these, these few more steps and then, you know, you can move on to something else. And in those three months, uh, in the last night, in the 90 day mastermind, mm -hmm. I learned that, you know, once you take off one thing, great, celebrate and keep on going yeah. because you just keep on moving forward and you're yeah. like, oh, wow, I reached this big milestone and okay, what's next? So yeah. it makes you crave for more. Yeah. And there's an incremental effort, right? A almost like yeah. this, it's like a compounded effect. It's not a one-time deal. And I think that's what most people need is to, to not only reach milestones on a short-term level, but actually really even understand what the next one should be, right? Which, yeah. is, which is always up for discussion and, and what we bounce yeah. ideas off other humans to do so. Um, now, lastly, about the academy, like you have obviously done a lot of work with me and the and the community from last year. What was your big reason to join the academy for 2018? I needed to be among people again. I missed <laughs> yeah. when when we stopped the 90 day mastermind. I was like, oh no, where what happened? So the great thing is that in the group we still talked to each other. Um, that we we're still posting. We we create. Um, uh, other events mm. like okay well let, let's keep on bouncing off ideas let's, let's hold each other accountable but I really need that I need to I need to know that I can check in every week um, with people and say okay this is what I'm working on this is what I'm struggling with and hearing the same from others mm. so that not only you get inspired by others but you know you can help someone and the fact that you can help someone it just gives you that great feeling like okay great you know i have something to offer is, yeah exactly yeah. i've got something to offer and they say yes and you go oh my god so uh 
Yeah, no, I, I love the fact that, that you can be with other people. Mm. Where, it doesn't matter where they are on their journey. We're, we're all in this journey together. And the fact that it's 12 months, especially in my first year of my business, is so key. So mm. I was like, yes, it's not three months, it's 12. Yeah. So yeah. And I think one of the things that I, I really love what you represent in the community is that you are a giver, right? And that's actually why I personally speak to every single person that comes into the academy because it is because of the group that is going that, that makes this program successful right it's the people mm. and so yes we need accountability yes we need community but actually with the right people that get along yes. but also have the same intention you know everyone here in the academy is um they're, they're not just not just like having a business because of money right yes we mm. want to profit but a lot of it's, it's a purpose-driven intention there's it's, it's, it's a life's work you know, it's a legacy yeah. career they're building rather than just like, just give me an idea and I'll do anything. Everybody really cares, mm. right? They want to care about contribution, which is a whole new breed of people, right? A whole different type <laughs> of person versus like all talking about funnels and Facebook ads and, you know, like something that's really unemotional. And, and we are all about creating really good work so that you don't need to depend on things like Facebook ads in order to be successful, right? Really just yeah. doing good work. Um, the second thing I really enjoyed um, inviting the right people into the academy and just like you is the idea of swapping skill sets, right? So if I remember, yes. even during uh, when you were with us at the 90 Day Mastermind, because of your learning and development skill set, you could help people craft their agenda for workshops. You could help people craft their curriculum and exercises. You were giving people ideas about how yeah. to you know, facilitate a room full of people because that was what you did, right, in that corporate job. Yeah. And then when someone had like, you know, like Danny, for example, who everyone will meet on the chat show tomorrow as well, he's super techie. He's a marketing genius. He's a brand artist. Mm. He helped you, right, with how to yeah. articulate yeah. your brand and sort of, you know, like, and that really exchange of not only just services but exchange of expertise and feedback I think it's so important for us to feel like we are part of a team again, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. as much as we don't want to be in corporate sitting in a, sitting in a boardroom on a Monday, day, Monday morning meeting, we do mm -mm. love collaboration, teamwork, yes. and a bit of that water cooler, you know, like, like community, right? So which, this is sort of what we're trying to create at the Academy. So thank you very much for sharing that. And of course, if you join for uh, February 19th, you'll see Sophia in the Academy and a lot of familiar faces that you'll start to see tomorrow as well in our chat show. Um, Sophia, thank you so much for coming on today and um, sharing a bit about you. your story. Um, and that's a great lead up for tomorrow's uh, free chat show that we're hosting. Again, the link is on top or above this video. Um, we are going to be jamming all about really, because everybody's escape story is so different. Mine, Sophia's, Dan's, and Pam's that you'll discover tomorrow. Everybody went towards um, the same goal, but it's sort of like different mm -hmm. versions of how we got there, which I think is really good to talk about because there isn't really this permanent blueprint, right? That if you yeah. copy it, it will happen for you. But we're challenging people to sort of think beyond uh, comparing themselves to other people or, or doing it the same way as other people, but, you know, inspiring you to think about your own, your own um, path, right? Your own low yeah. hanging fruit opportunities, your own freelancing opportunities that is maybe not a business to start, but, you know, a, a still a great opportunity financially. Um, so I can't wait to dive into that with you uh, and also talk a little bit about the life preparation that you had to do yes. in the 12 months in order to um, get you mentally and physically and environmentally ready to leave. So can't wait to have a conversation tomorrow. Uh, now, quickly, before we sort of end this uh, quick interview, is where can people find you online if they want to find out a little bit more about the leadership coaching that you do? So I have my website. It's sophiadarkawi.com. Yeah, we'll add that um, to the post. Thank you. And uh, so I created this program called Lead Through Happiness. It's also a 90-day program where it's one-on-one -on -one coaching every other week. And we look at um, mostly people who are really stuck in a rut. They're going to the office with like 10,000 pounds at each leg <laughs> and just dra dragging themselves to work because they feel underappreciated. Mm. Um, they can't, they feel they can't progress. They don't really see the opportunities around themselves. Mm. And it's really okay. What, um, to think back of what is really your goal for this year? What is it that you really want to achieve? And especially why do you want to achieve that mm. and work on it progressively and, but work mostly on why is that so important to you? Who are you as a person? Let's work on your values, on your brand, 
and then move on from from that way forward and so that you can just walk back up straight into that office into this new career that you're that, that you're going for and I've had in my beta testers I've had people leaving a job going into a new one going on maternity leave coming back to a new job so it, it, it is very interesting to work with with different types of, of people mm. um, especially at mid-management or higher but at any level of the company because that's what I firmly believe in um, and that's what I was also describing my ex-colleagues that look at this room full of people to me the leaders are sitting here on the chairs and are not on that on that um, on that stage mm. I said you guys are the leaders I mean yeah. they are too but you guys are the ones who create this leadership and and Every single thing that you do in a day, you don't realize it, but you do lead mm. by example. Mm. Even if it's just like I'm giving up coffee and I'm drinking green tea. That is just those small things. It's, it's the way that you come to work. It's the way that you behave that makes that differentiates you from, from everybody else. So yeah. that's really what I want people to realize that, yes, you are your, your own ray of sunshine. You are a leader to other people. You don't need to hold that title because in all reality, there is no such thing as I am the leader of that. Mm. So, um, yeah, you're the leader of your life, but you don't need to have it on your business card. You just are. Yeah. I love that you're, you're, you say that, you know, you don't have to be a CEO or a high level manager to feel like, a, like you have leadership in the workplace. So, mm. you know, and, and you're really in a way mentoring anyone that wants to create leadership in the workplace, go after yeah. the opportunities that are most aligned with their leadership qualities and actually find their leadership brand. Right. At the end, of yeah. the day, everyone can be a leader, even if you don't have a big team underneath you. Every time you communicate with a colleague, every time you pitch something, every time you go after an opportunity, you are acting in accordance with your leadership uh, uh, goals and, and yeah. becoming that person now rather than when you get that promotion. Right. So that exactly. actually, so it's almost like cart before the horse. Right. It's like you got to yeah. be a leader in order to get that leadership role. Right. And, and, yeah. and discover that maybe you don't need to be like your boss. You can have your own leadership qualities um, and be noticed at work. Right. Communicate, exactly. Communicate better with your colleagues and um, build a much better environment to work uh, wherever. Right. That you choose to work in, which is awesome. So you don't have to exactly. be a business owner only to be a leader. You can actually be, nope. uh, you know, have sort of entrepreneurship qualities in your corporation, in right? In your company. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Exactly. Excellent. Well, excellent. We'll, we'll put the links on and make sure you can visit Sophia at her website. And uh, she also does some free discovery calls, which is awesome to help you sort of find yeah. out what your goals are for you this year. Um, and then if you sign up for our chat show tomorrow, um, you will also see her and replays will be sent as well for people who can't attend this live. But if you do come live, we will answer all your burning questions about your career transition journey as well all right Sophia all thank right. you so very much for staying up for us in oh yeah, wait is it thank morning you. no it's morning for you I, yeah I woke up yeah I'm like what <laughs> time zone am I in yeah yeah you, you it's morning for you and, and then evening for me very soon so yes thanks very much for contributing your time and we'll see you tomorrow thank you bye, bye. Sophia.